thanks everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon, um, live from Bradenton, Florida. Um, kind of fun to say now that we're here and it's exciting that we're getting going in the 2020 season. Um, we got Sil via Falls and Nafisa Collier uh, from the links available to everyone. Um, we're gonna start um, our questions with uh, Katie Davidson. Um, so Katie, uh, give me a second and I will unmute you for a second. All right, Katie, go ahead. Okay. Uh, KP, uh, glad to hear that you made it to Florida safely. Um, I've got one question and then a follow-up, but I'm just curious, um, what excites you the most about the league's newly announced platform justice movement and its commitment to social justice? I'm sorry, can I cut out? What did you say? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm just curious what you're most excited about for um, the league's newly announced platform, the justice movement, and the work you guys will be doing focused on social justice. I'm really excited. Uh, I think it's great that the league is supporting us so fully in this important time. Um, as athletes, I think it's great that we use our platform, and it's so important that the league that we play for supports us, like I said, so fully. So we're really excited and, you know, with the jerseys, with the names on the back, um, we're just really excited for what we can contribute and helping to bring some kind of change. Is it okay if I ask a follow-up, Erin? Okay. Um, just last time we spoke to Cheryl, she said that she expected reporters to also follow the league's lead and continue this conversation about um, raising awareness about social justice, racial justice, everything, especially what happened in Minneapolis. What expectations do you have for reporters um, as we try to continue this conversation even when basketball resumes? Uh, I think just to keep writing about it. Um, it's really important to get that out there and people read what you guys write. So while it is important like we're in our season and I know you guys have jobs to do, we have to write about that. Um, there's more important things happening in basketball right now. So I think it's just really important like we, like I said that we just keep pushing the narrative and keep um, exposing these things and keep it in the forefront of people's minds by continuing to write about it. Awesome. Our next question is coming from Mike Rand from the Star Tribune. Um, mm -hmm. Mike, go ahead. Uh, question for mm -hmm. Sylvia or uh, Nafisa. Um, maybe this can be for both of you. How you guys doing? Um, welcome to Florida. Just curious, a lot of players were posting both positive and negative experiences about their arrivals so far at the academy. What has been your uh, experience so far in, in the bubble and how do you think you know, life will be adjusting to, adjusting to this as you go along? I will go fee and then so. My experience so far has been good. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in the villas and it's really nice. I like what we're saying. Um, so my experience has been good. It's, a, it's day two, like half of day two. So we're excited to see, you know, what else the league is doing. And we had a call earlier today where they addressed a lot of our concerns, which was really good. So um, I think everyone's pretty ready to get started. All right. So uh, let me, uh, so let me get you spotlighted. All right. So go ahead. Um, my experience has been good so far. I don't have any issues. Um, I'm in the lodge, but with that said too, I think um, I'm just pretty easygoing. It don't take much to please me. And um, I just want to make sure I keep that, that good. I'm making sure that um, I don't try to complain as much. Um, not everybody's going to be happy. And you got to pretty much take the punches as you roll. And like B said, we're just in day two. And so we'll see how this thing pan out. All right, our next question is coming from Charles Paulman in the Spokesman Recorder. Uh, Charles, hang on one second. Charles, I'm trying to unmute you. Um, so if you, can, if you can unmute Charles and, and you can ask your question. You got it now? Yep, there you go, Charles. Okay, so how are you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. Same uh, here. This is also for you, you and also for Napisha. Uh, Napisha, as terms of justice, social justice movement, and the committee that just been formed, uh, is there anything that you're going to be doing specifically, or have you had a chance to think about that as you 
because you're getting ready to prepare for the season, uh, your involvement, and in, especially since you are from Florida and this is your your home state? Um, I haven't given much thought on what I want to do personally, but I think we quite we're in pretty a uh, unique situation by having all us in one space at one time, and so just pretty much brainstorming off each other of what are you doing? How can I help? This is what I'm doing. This is how I want you to help. I think it's going to be very important over the next couple of months. And then Fee, go ahead. Um, pretty much the same as so. We've, you know, had a lot of these conversations with our team saying, what do we want to do as a team? How can we help each other, um, like, help, uh, help to get the word out, like, whatever we want to do. Um, so we've had a lot of those kind of team conversations. And I think it's really good to be in the bubble because even though, you know, you have to keep all the protocols, social distancing and things, it's a lot easier to talk to people so you can bounce ideas off of other people, maybe from other teams, seeing their perspective and what they want to do. And um, so that's one advantage to being here as well. And a follow up to both of you. Uh, do you feel that you're getting enough time to prepare for the season? Uh, it's such a rushed fashion in terms of getting ready for playing, even a shorter, shorter schedule. Do you feel you'll have enough time, and do you feel that there's things that you're going to need to really ramp up soon and early to get ready for it? Um, it's interesting that you ask that question, but um, we've been doing stuff as a team that they've been sending us to do while we haven't been playing. So it'll be interesting that it's going to get going fairly quickly. But I think our main concern is just making sure we're healthy and we're holding accountable for whatever happens. Yeah. Um, so like Sil said, we were given kind of programs to do as much as we could, you know, before this. And a lot of us were able to come to Minnesota and do our individual workouts. So that was really good to kind of do that and see the coaches and kind of get that um, head start that we're allowed to have. But we're going to have, you know, a two-week training camp, which is what we have every year. Um, so I think, I mean, everyone's working with the same thing, so we're just going to do our best. All right, our next question is from Don Mitchell at Fox 9. Don, give me one second. All right, go ahead, Don. Thanks for doing this, both of you. Uh, it's both of you, but I'm going to start with Sylvia because it's kind of a jump off to what you said that you try not to complain that much. It's new for everyone. 2020 has been a crazy year. This is not going to be normal. How much do you have to say that to yourself and especially to some of the younger girls coming in that don't know any different? Um, just keeping a positive mindset. And it, it starts with our captains and with our coaches. Just making sure, like, these younger players or these new incoming players to the links understand, like, this is not normal. It's not normal for anyone, but you pretty much have to roll with it. And like we said, everybody is, is on the same page. We're pretty much at a blank slate. And it's, it's just going to determine your mindset. If you're positive about it, things are happen for you. But if you just sit and complain, then things are not going to work out. And so we don't want to be that – that team that complains. Um, we want to try to like work things out as much as possible. And if it's out of our control, then we just have to go with it and, and, and soak it up. All right, our next question is coming from, uh, Don, did you have another question? No, I just wanted um, to get Nafisa's outlook too, because it's, kind of, it's just crazy. So to keep that mindset that you're kind of operating in a crazy world, I kind of wanted uh, Fee's outlook on that, too. Yeah, Fee, go It ahead. is really crazy. And, um, I mean, just like Syl said, there are so many things that are out of our control right now. We can't control the things that are going on in the world, um, but we can control our attitude. And like she said, we don't want to be the team that's complaining. Everyone is in the exact same situation. So there's nothing we can do about it. We're doing our best. We're here to play, um, which is what we all wanted. So... You just got to stay positive, and especially, like she said, as the captains, we have to lead for our team. We have to set a good example, so we need to make sure that everyone is having the same mindset because if you're complaining, then um, our, us as a team, we can get ahead because while you're busy doing that, we're practicing, we're making the best out of the situation. Thank you. All right, our next question is coming from Howard Megdahl. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Lafisa, and thanks, Syl. Great to chat with you both. Um, I'm curious for each of you in turn, what's been the most surreal thing 
that you've experienced just over this last 24 hour period? Obviously, you're not only experiencing the WNBA at the moment, but you're experiencing a way that no one ever has before. So I was hoping if, if you'd take me through perhaps a moment that stood out for you. Yeah, we'll start with B and then so. When we first got here, that really stood out because especially I'm not far removed from college, it felt like we were at the final four. So it feels like we're in college again, which I actually think is kind of fun, like to have such easy access to so many people. Uh, I think it's kind of cool to be back in that situation. I don't want it every year, obviously, but it's kind of cool to be back in that. And yeah, when we stepped off the bus, I was like, wow, throwback, because it definitely felt like we were at a tournament or something. Thanks, Rick. Oh, well, I definitely wouldn't say college. Um, I think mine felt more so like um, AAU basketball. And, and it's a unique situation to be in um, because for anyone who ever played AAU basketball, you understand like those are crucial moments in your career where you meet folks, you learn how to trust folks, and that's where you build relationships. So it's pretty unique to have us in this bubble and to have to go back to the bare basics of what us are really good friends and just starting those conversations all over again. Thank you both. Stay safe out there, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Our next question is coming from Pat Borzi. Um, Pat, give me one second. All right, Pat, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Hi, Sil. Hi, uh, Fee. Glad you guys are uh, healthy and safe. Um, wanted to I'm going to presume that you've probably heard about this by now, that uh, Kelly Loeffler uh, sent a letter to uh, Kathy Engelbert um, that was made public early today. She objected to the uh, league's plans to honor the Black Lives Movement because she said, quote, it undermines the potential of the sport and sends a message of exclusion. I'm not particularly sure how that's helpful. I'm wondering if either of you have any reaction to that. Um, honestly, I try to stay away from stuff like that because everybody has their opinion and everybody is entitled to their opinion. So you really can't get mad for somebody voicing their opinion. Um, but at the end of the day, how I see it, uh, it don't matter what color of your skin is, it's human and treating people right is treating people right. So if that's the way she feels, then kudos to her. But at the end of the day, I think we all understand that we're on a mission to highlight black lives and how important it is to the world that we stay in, it's not pretty much about excluding anybody. Um, yes, all lives matter. Um, but at the same time, uh, black lives just need a little bit more attention nowadays. Do you yeah, to um, this? Go ahead. Sorry, I, I hadn't seen that yet. So that's the first time I heard that. Uh, I think at this point, since everything's been going on, if you uh, still don't understand the concept of like what black lives mean that says more about you, I think. Um, it's not about, like Sil said, it's not only black lives matter. It is all lives matter, but black lives are the ones that need the help right now. And I think that's been made very clear if you've been paying attention. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Pat. Our next question is uh, coming from uh, Cody Sherritt from uh, linksbasketball.com. Cody, go ahead. Hey, you're in your second year and you're already a captain. How do you embrace that leadership role with Karima and Sil? And what does your style of leadership look like? Um, I felt really honored when I was approached to be a captain, uh, especially, like you said, in my second year. I take it very seriously. And I want to be, for someone, what Sil and the other captains were for me last year someone that they can talk to and look up to and can lead by example. Um, I was really fortunate to have great captains last year, great vets. And so even though I'm not a vet, I definitely want to be that person for anyone on the team. Um, my leadership style is usually more lead by example, but um, I, the past couple of years, especially in college, I had to step into that more vocal role. So it's something that um, I have been trying to grow at and trying to get better at and something that I will try to bring to the team now. All right, our next question is coming from Aria Schwartz. Aria, go ahead. Hey there, uh, this is both for C, uh, Sil and Fee. Um, I'm curious why you think it was important to play this season, and then also if you could talk a little bit about this roster and what it does and excites you in regard to your personal development as a player. We'll start with Fee. 
Um, sorry, can you repeat the first part of your question? Yeah. Uh, why did you think it was important to play this season? Okay. Um, I think it's really important because even though it is very risky and it's, if anyone doesn't want to play, it's very understandable. There's a lot going on right now. Um, I think it's really important for the league. We are still, we're not new, but we're still growing and um, we still want to get the league out there and we want to play basketball. That's our profession. That's what we all love to do. So if there's any way to do that in a safe way, I think everyone was really excited to do that. And I'm really excited for our new roster. This is the second time for Sill that the team, the team is really new. Um, I obviously was new last year, so I was part of that newness, but I really love all the, uh, the women on the team. And it's been really nice to kind of get to know them via Zoom these past couple months. And I can't wait to get on the court with them. I think that our chemistry is really great already. So I think it's going to translate great to really good team ball and um, just a great environment to play in. Yep. Um, two reasons of why I thought was playing this season uh, was very important. One uh, was the commitment that I made to the Minnesota Lynx. And so I'm fulfilling that. Um, so that was priority number one. Um, priority number two was um, I think my platform is more meaningful if you have on a uniform. Not saying that basketball is everything, but I think people will pay attention more to get sidetracked as humans. And so I thought that was also important. As far as roster-wise, um, I'm very happy with the pieces that we have. Um, Cheryl did a really good job of making sure she communicate on every level uh, before she brought everybody in. And like Fee said, like we get along already. The chemistry is already good. And I think a lot of that has to do with we're just goofy and we just want to play and we want to play to the best of our ability. I'm looking forward to seeing what this group can do this year. Awesome, thanks, Sil. Uh, our next question is coming from Darren Wilson from KSTP. Uh, Doogie, go ahead. Thanks, ladies, for doing this. Curious, following up on, on what Howard asked you guys, well, what was the experience like flying commercial? And was there any thought in, in flying charter? Uh, Sil, go uh, ahead. Okay. Or, Fee, you can go. Sil, so you can go. <laughs> Um, I mean, flying was, it was weird. Like we have to, it's different than obviously what we are normally doing. You have to be very cautious, just like you do anytime you go out, wear a mask, um, make sure you wash your hands. They're sanitizing the planes. You have to wear your mask the whole plane ride. I wasn't aware of us taking a charter. I don't know if that was in the plans at all. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's different. This whole year, we were talking about a year ago, how different everything was. So it, I mean, obviously reflects how everything else is very um, COVID conscious. Um, I'm pretty OCD. So uh, me wiping down my seats and stuff on the plane was me doing before even COVID hit. So, but it's weird to have to remind yourself to wear a mask, which I hate. Um, I can recall walking out the hotel yesterday, getting on a bus and Freeman just was like, mask, mask, put your mask on. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> but, you know, you don't think about those things because you just want to get back to what's normal to us. And that's not a mask. And so just constantly reminding yourself of the little things like making sure you wash your hands often. Don't play in your face, which I do often. And um, making sure you wear your mask makes it very, very weird. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, next question is coming from uh, Dane Mizutani uh, from the Pioneer Press. Um, Dane, go ahead. Sorry, unmuted now. There you go. Have, have you got, not to get like too pessimistic, but like for both players, have you thought about or entertained the thought that like the season might not finish with the spikes in Florida? And I know you said like you guys are controlling what you can control, but that seems like it could be a reality with just the way the world is right now. We'll start with Still and then we'll go to Fee. Um, I'd be lying to you if I haven't thought about that. Um, you try to think about it. Not as often, but often enough to just be safe. And like you said, with the, the number spiking here in Florida, I'm from Florida, so it doesn't put that high alert on what if we don't finish the season. But at the end of the day, I'm very optimistic on this season. And we can only go as it go. So, yeah, I'm staying positive on that. Mm -hmm. All right, Fee. Yeah, I don't think it's being pessimistic. I think it's just exploring all the options. And it's obviously still a possibility that it could happen. Uh, just with, like you said, all the numbers spiking, but the league is taking every precaution, um, you know, quarantining masks, social distancing, things like that. So 
if there's if it's possible for us to have a season, I think we will. Um, like I said, we're taking all the necessary precautions, so everyone is really optimistic for it, and we're excited to get started. Awesome. Our, our next question and final question. Um, we, have, we have time for a few more. So if you have any other questions that you'd like to be uh, that you'd like to ask, uh, just shoot a note in the the Zoom chat or a text, and we'll get you going. Um, but Doug, go ahead with your question. Uh, hey, ladies, I have two questions. One is, how are you planning to spend the next couple of days? I think you're in quarantine. So what do you plan to do while you can't play basketball? Um, and the second is, you both have connections to Maya. I mean, still you play with her, and V, you obviously have the UConn connection. What it, was your reaction to hearing what obviously happened with her and, and getting uh, Jonathan freed over the last couple of days? We'll start with Syl, and then we'll go to V. Um, Maya, wow, is what I think about uh, when you put Maya into perspective, uh, just from a human standpoint and the things that she believe in and the morals that she carry outside of the basketball world is everything that you probably want your daughter to be, strong, um, very cool, um, a leader. And so I look at Maya as a shero. She's like my shero. And it's funny that I say that because she's so much younger than me, but that's just the reality of the things that Maya is doing. So to see her working as hard as she do if, if she was on the court um, definitely means a lot for a woman. Yeah, it is absolutely amazing. Um, and she's been doing this since I was in high school, so it's been a long time coming. And I am so happy for her family, for him, for everyone involved in this, because, um, I mean, it's, it's amazing that also she gave up her career for this amazing, like this great cause and to see it come to fruition like this, it's, it's so cool to see. It's, um, she is like a Shiro. It's, it was amazing. Our next question is coming from uh, Mitchell Hansen uh, from Zone Coverage. Uh, Mitchell, go ahead. Yeah, hey, this uh, this question is for, for both of you, um, if possible. Um, you know, you, you guys kind of talked about what life is like um, while you're there in Florida, but if, if you could maybe just, just dive into a little bit of, like, what you know, you've been told as far as maybe testing or um, kind of day-to-day activities. Have you have you been told anything by either the team or the league as far as how that will, will play out? Uh, well, we'll go with me first. So we have testing every day for the next couple weeks um, and we're quarantined for the next like four days or something. And then after that we have, you know, uh, I think there's like a golf course on, on here. There's a pool, uh, but I mean, we're not allowed to really leave the bubble obviously for safety reasons. So probably a lot of Netflix in our futures. As for me right now, um, I'm still in school, so I have class every Wednesday. Um, so a lot of reading and a lot of getting homework turned in by the end of the week is what my focus is. And um, obviously studying for the national board because graduation is in December. So school is my main focus right now during quarantine. Uh, and our next question is coming from uh, Howard McDowell. Uh, Howard, go ahead. Hi, so you hear me now? <clears throat> Great, thanks. You, you actually touched on um, what I wanted to ask you about. It's sort of a two-part. One is the, the status of where you are in school at this point. How close are you to finishing up? And, and, and then I just had a quick follow-up um, about something slightly different. So right now, um, I got one more class for this semester that's in and weeks, I believe, at the, end of the week, at the end of the month. So yeah, a couple of more weeks. And um, I have another semester that will lead me into the winter semester. And then after that, it's, it's graduation for me. Wow, congratulations in advance. And then the, the follow-up I had was just the legacy of the group that you have played with here since arriving. I, I mean, it just feels like the country has come a significant distance and you guys were at really what a lot of people think of as the start of the, that conversation in the W. And I just, I, I wonder, have you thought about the legacy of that group and sort of the different directions it's gone, different ways in which you guys have impacted uh, our society well, well, well beyond in many different ways? Um, 
to be honest, I haven't had time to sit back and reflect. Um, There's just so much going on right now. Um, but if I have to say anything about that group, I, I'm definitely liking the way the pieces are moving. Um, these women are getting out there and they're doing stuff beyond basketball. Um, it's nice to see Maya do her thing, Weezy do her thing. BB's now back within the organization coach and Moan's still out there exploring. And so I'm happy with where we are. Um, I think I won't realize what that, that means and what we meant to the game probably in the next couple of years when I decide to wind down. All right, awesome. And our final question um, of the afternoon is coming from Aria. Um, Aria, uh, go ahead. Hey, Fee. Um, I was curious. You had a historic uh, – can you hear me? Yep. yep. You had a historic rookie season. I'm curious uh, what aspect of your game you really focused on during the offseason. I really focus on my perimeter game, switching to like the three position. It kind of uh, showed me some things I needed to work on. So three points specifically was what I was really working on in the off season. And then, you know, ball handling and things like that. So my perimeter game. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone uh, for jumping on this afternoon. Um, continue to stay safe and healthy. Um, I'll send out the link for, um, for today's Zoom. Um, and we hope to talk to you, uh, to you guys soon.